Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we'll be exploring the structure and function of cardiac muscle tissue. Cardiac muscle cells, also called fibers, like in skeletal muscle tissue, are shorter than skeletal muscle fibers and are branched, which gives them sort of a zigzag-like appearance. There is usually one nucleus within the center of most cardiac muscle fibers, although some fibers may have two nuclei. Cardiac muscle fibers are connected to each other at their ends by thickened regions of their plasma membranes, also called the sarcolemmas, called intercalated discs. They resemble in these illustrations the interlocking grooves of jigsaw puzzle pieces, which creates a very strong connecting joint between adjacent cardiac muscle fibers. The discs consist of two cellular junction components, desmosomes, which attach the fibers to each other, as well as gap junctions, openings which are able to convey and propagate the muscle action potential from fiber to fiber to allow synchronized, coordinated contraction of the heart's chambers. And like skeletal muscle fibers, cardiac muscle fibers are striated, having the same organization of thick and thin filaments and the same sarcomere structure with the same zones and bands as skeletal muscle sarcomeres. The mitochondria found in the cardiac muscle fibers are also larger in size and more abundant than in skeletal muscle fibers, occupying as much as 25% of the sarcoplasm volume. Cardiac muscle fibers don't have as much sarcoplasmic reticulum as skeletal muscle fibers, and this limits the amount of calcium ions they can store inside their cells. The larger and more abundant mitochondria in cardiac muscle fibers gives this tissue the ability to obtain most of its ATP through aerobic cellular respiration. Very little ATP is generated in cardiac muscle fibers by anaerobic respiration. The oxygen that is required for aerobic respiration diffuses out of the coronary circulation and into the cardiac muscle fibers, where it is stored by the myoglobin and released when needed. The breakdown or oxidation of fatty acids accounts for about 60% of the heart's ATP, while glucose oxidation accounts for 35% of the ATP. The remainder of the ATP comes mostly from the oxidation of amino acids, lactic acid generated by contracting muscle fibers, ketone bodies, and creatine phosphate. The heart can utilize more lactic acid to supply its energy needs during exercise.